Good morning. It's Monday morning instead of Sunday morning. I babysat my almost three-year-old granddaughter Saturday night and I'm still a little hoarse and a little beat up because I don't think I got a lot of sleep and was not able to do anything uh, yesterday afternoon as far as putting a video out. So thank you for your patience and I'm really glad that you're here. Um, today I want to talk about uh, sensory abuse and the way it's historically been used um, and, and how we as parents, we as partners, we as a collective human um, beings at this point, right, get to decide whether or not we're going to continue with that. Makes sense, right? So um, when I first got to Whitefish, I started uh, studying with a mystery school. Um, and then when I went to Bainbridge, I studied with second mystery school. So I have two mystery schools under my belt. And the first one talked about um, breaking the human energy system into six different quadrants or, or quadrants, six different sections, spiritual, mental, physical on one side or to me on one side. Right. And then the emotional, cosmic and physical energy. And so what I've been doing this last week is playing with this. And at 513 this morning, it, I just was tapped like, wake up, write this down. So I grabbed the piece of paper and this flowed out of me in about three minutes, okay? So I thought I would just share it with you. It's bizarre, but I'll just share it with you, right? So when we really look at the mental, the mental part is how we use our mind, right? The physical is how we inhabit and work with and create and and accumulate on the physical 3d plane right and and spiritual is actually fire it's where we go into production it's where we go into momentum and action and so when we have these three they push 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 on us constantly um what i'm noticing is that the emotional physical energy um and cosmic so emotional of course is water and feelings and energy and motion Physical energy is how we read the synchronicities, how we read the pulses, the vibrations of the world. And cosmic is how we cross over the veils and use our clairs and our information to bring um, to bring concepts and, and information in from the other side of the veil, right? But these are unknown. These are intuitive. These are empowering. These are the essence of our soul. These are where our senses and our clairs reside. This is where we get a tingling. We have memories. Sense can come in and we and we have we can go right straight to a certain point. We can um we can use our clair cognizant, our clairvoyant, our clairaudient to guide us as we go along, right? So what I'm wondering, and I'm just gonna keep putting this out there today, is that whether it's a matrix or it's a web or whether it is a strategically designed control system that keeps us away from physical energy, cosmic and emotional, because it is our most empowering component, right? I had my paper in front of my face, sorry about that. So um, if, if this is strategically designed, it's designed to overwhelm us, to overstimulate, to traumatize us and to disempower, right? It keeps us crumbled, which is, I don't know what to do when my senses are overwhelmed and my confidence or my independence is completely shattered when I am shook, right? Makes sense, right? So when we think of things like wars and violence and news on the on, of all these attacks and shootings um, uh, every day, um, the traumatization of our emotional, our nervous system, what if that is by design? And it's put into even movies, video games. Um, it creates a lot of pain for us, right? So it does keep our energy system shut down. If you talk to someone who has really high sensories, issues, um, really high sensitivities, really high empathic skills like myself, you'll know that I don't watch horror movies. I don't watch um, gun and violence movies because I can't. They keep me up. They hurt They hurt my energy system, right? And we may have children that have that same issue or we ourselves might, right? So when there's this, hmm, I think of the protective animals like um, like the way a crab will pull in or a snail will pull in or a turtle will pull in, right? Or flowers will bloom and then they'll pull in at night to, to protect the, the delicacy of it. Um, that these are the mechanisms that happen when we don't feel safe. I did an entire 
uh, video on the sea anemone and what that might be like. So, so think of those things that where they close up to protect, to, um, to create um, safety inside and, and not to, to, to let sort of the outside world go, right? So uh, I did my senior thesis in college. I was a historian and a medieval and Renaissance historian. And for whatever reason, um, our professor picked World War I as our area of study. And so I had a really interesting time picking that topic because what I focused on was the actual physical day-to-day -day life of the soldier and what was different in World War I versus the previous wars. Yes, there were always cannons and gunfire and gore and smells, right? We know that about war. What we didn't expect during World War I was that the air would be poisoned by gas. We had to wear gas masks, which blocked our vision, blocked our senses, and that we were standing in um, four to six inches of mud and feces. And I mean, think of all of the horrible things that are in trenches, right? And that there were um, machine guns. And so this constant battling, you know, uh, uh, sound of that, 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 um, it, it took the sensory of the, the, um, the soldier, didn't matter what country they were from. It just took the sensory of the soldier and just shut it down and traumatized them for decades. You know, we have the, the prohibition, which was started in order to keep these men from drinking themselves to, into, into stupors because they didn't know what to do with their sensory systems when they got home from war. So when I put all these pieces together, I start to realize, well, what if we are really sensory abused, right? We're disoriented. We retreat inward. Um, the external is just berating us all the time. I went to um, and the movies uh, first time in three years after COVID, right? And sat there at the previews and the advertisements and the speed and the sound and the, the, the constant movement was overwhelming. It, it was very hard for me to focus on the movie because I noticed that something had really jumped in, in that sensory overload, right? So, how, you know, it's, these things are created, I believe, to cause us discomfort, overwhelm, to create um, chaos, and, and then puts us into that constant unknown fear and doubt. So if our sensory systems are, are beautiful, um, intuitive, emotional, energy reading, connection to across the veil is shut down, it removes us from the human potential that we have. And I think it's our job to start finding out what we do about that, right? Because when, when we, when, 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 we realize that we have a, a standard list of symptoms that sort of come up when that overwhelm is there. What I noticed is that these symptoms are the same symptoms that are coming up right now with the solar flare. So now I bring the solar flares in and I'm like, wow, this is fascinating because what we're really looking at is exhaustion, um, fatigue, a, a, a nonstop need for rest, right? Headaches, migraines, um, ears ringing, um, sinuses they're they're getting they're puffed up and there's just no way to breathe really really comfortable um dis-ease um cancers um fun uh, dysfunctioning organs right anxiety our nervous system system is off and we are recalibrating all the time so if these are the same systems from the solar flares then i'm wondering like are we being led into something are we being guided towards hey pay attention to your sensory system that would make sense to me because that's sort of the big picture stuff that i see all the time as a double pisces right i'm like oh wait a minute there's this there's this there's this and they're all part of the same web right so these are these flares are doing something to us i know that but i'm not sure what are they recalibrating us are they rebuilding us are we awakening, you know, for the first time um, to something that really actually exists within us, which is our emotional, uh, physical energy and cosmic skills that we ignore and have had a hard time accessing, right? Um, are we blooming? Um, are we struggling with the choices of how do I rest and nurture and recalibrate? Or do I push through this and just pretend like it's not happening? I'm noticing people for the entire last year that have been pushing and pushing and they just have one issue after the other. And those that have sort of surrendered and said, hmm, I think there's something else, um, are stepping outside of this web or this matrix and money isn't coming in. 
um, friends are falling off, it's, it's lonely, and I'm thinking we're just really at a choice point. So I have some tips. I have six tips for you, and I thought I would um, go through those. And again, I offer one hour sessions, coaching packages about this, which is what are you feeling? What are you experiencing? How do you navigate through this with a family system? How do you navigate it th through this with a partner or through a job? These are the kinds of things that I love to work with and talk about. I also do tarot readings, which sort of helps very quickly understand where the focus is, where to put your focus so that you can move forward. So just consider that, right? Uh, it's my plug for the day, okay? So I have six tips. Number one, explore this idea that I've presented. Track it. Like, when are you in adrenal-induced production? Like, got to, got to, got to, got to. It, it, we sort of are right now because we're, we're in the holiday season. This is where there are sales. We're trying to... It, it, we're trying to gift people, we're trying to gather, we're trying to travel. We're also trying to eat meet year-end um, goals in our, in our companies, in our businesses. It's, it's quite fascinating, right? So this production, this action, this worry, this overwhelm, look at the sources for it. Is it in your schedule? Is it in your finances? Is it, is it in your familial religious expectations? Is it external or is it internal? So that's the first one, is explore the adrenaline rush that you're having in, in that production. Number two, choose small moments of self-care. Step out, breathe, recalibrate, restore. What happens when you do this? What happens when you turn your phone off, you go sit in your car and it's really quiet and you do absolutely nothing but just breathe? What happens when you actually ha um, go back in and start up again? Are you refreshed or are you in dread? So this is what we're doing is we're causing, we're, we're creating small amounts of peace and then going, what do you do when, right? Um, number three, Actively seek out the emotions. Feel. Feel your emotions, right? Feel the physical energy. Track, you know, the looks, the energy, the, 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 the way your children react to certain family members or certain people or certain environments. Um, pay attention to the cosmic, your dreams, your synchronicities. Um, because uh, you're even watching me. If you're watching me and we're talking about this, how come you're watching me? Like, like pay attention to those kind of synchronicities, right? Um, number four between now and through the winter. So get through the holidays, go through January, February, explore ways that you can do deeper self-care. Because you know, once the holidays are over, especially here in Montana, we have January, February, March of snow. So this is where you sleep, you do deep self-care, you feed your nervous system, you get quiet, you create peace inside, right? Peace inside of yourself. Number five, Review the schedules, oh, the commitments, and then get into the re's, refuse, renegotiate, redefine, recreate what you wanna do, reform your life, because this is where we get the chance to decide, now I'm not going that way anymore, I'm gonna turn and take it this way, because it's really important for me to grow in this self-nurturing and find my skill sets that I've been ignoring or that have been dormant within me, right? And then, you know, have compassion because when you take that steering wheel and you start to go this way, it's it's odd, it's different. You lose friends, you lose family. Um, I've taken my kids as a family system and my whole entire family um, when they were in elementary school through uh, voluntary simplicity. We've really explored holidays, money, um, creating experiences and events that that feed us and nurture us during the um, different seasons. So have compassion that this is really hard. It's hard for you, it's hard for the people that are doing it around you. And then sort of keep holding that compassion towards the collective, which is we are navigating through some really interesting energy right now. We are becoming aware of how often our energy system has been abused and what we can do about it. So if you'd like more information, you can, um, you, I've got my contact information down below here. Um, like, subscribe, and by all means, if you have feedback or comments, I would love to hear from you. You take care. See you next week.